Hello, good morning, and welcome to this Dawn Busters Taste Challenge. We have from 1909, or really 1867, to the old name, Johnny Walker Red Label Blended Scotch Whiskey, age at least three years. Distilled, age, blended, and bottled in Scotland. It is a Diageo brand. The competitor, imported Inverhouse Green Plaid, very rare Scotch Whiskey. I don't know about how rare it is, but uh, a blend of superbly light, 100% rare <laughs> Scotch whiskey, distilled and blended in Scotland. Makes sense. Product of Scotland. Okay, we get it. Um, Green Plaid is bottled in Illinois, Chicago, Illinois, by Barton Imports. Barton Imports is owned by Sazerac. Sazerac bought the Barton Company in 1909, or the Barton Assets, perhaps that was it. In 19, not 1909, what am I saying? 2009, Mark Life's Finest Moments, Johnny Walker Blue Label, a blend of our rarest whiskeys. I'm looking at their website. Oh, it's... <coughs> Sarah and Jim get engaged 2017 drink and Johnny Walker Blue Label. Hey, but you could also drink it for Dawn Busters Taste Challenge. The Blue Label. People are going to say you paid over $240 so you could do a taste challenge. Taste challenges. Hey, but it would be fun, right? I didn't even get a chance to look at Lou Rockwell this morning. Uh, well, I got up an hour later than normal because I went to sleep later than normal. Let's see. A most convenient virus by Dmitry Orlov. Uh huh. Democrats ignore Trump's real violations by Ron Paul. Yes, that's right. Citizens United Revisited by Lawrence Vance. Trump is right about architecture by James Kunstler. Blatantly Iowa caucus math is now official by Michael Shedlock. Hollywood more censored than when I did pl Platoon. Films bashing U.S. Army and CIA can't go public, says Oliver Stone. Adam Schiff's Russia bashing is unhinged and dangerous. Helen Cobbin wrote an article called, Did Washington Use a False Pretext for Its Bloody Escalation in Iraq? Huh. Morning, Ron. Hey, uh, keep sipping, Trish. So I might read those articles. Uh, they kind of look like stuff I know about a little bit. Anyway, I like to check in because Lou Rockwell been reading that for 20 years. Okay. So Inver House. I don't think Inver House got a chance at all. Now, today is the first day I'm wearing short pants. First day of 2020. It's going to be like 80 degrees today. It was so warm last night. I had the windows open and I couldn't decide. Like, I put the blanket on. I felt hot. I took it off. I felt a little chilly. You know, that kind of thing. So that's one reason I had trouble sleeping because all night I was like, I'm hot. No, I'm chilly a little bit. No, I'm hot. I'm chilly a little bit. So it's so frustrating. You say, well, put the air conditioner on. I ain't putting the air conditioner on in February. Sorry. And I'm sure not putting the heater on. Okay. All right. We're going to have a cold front coming through. It's going to get down to 49. You say, oh, wow. <laughs> right. Um, so this is W, that would be Walker. <laughs> so let's see what Walker Brothers has for us. In other words, Diageo. But uh, from what I can tell, Diageo, if they're smart, see, and I think they are, they've taken a hands-off approach. They're like, you've been making whiskey since the 1860s. Keep doing it. We own you, but you do it. Kind of like Anheuser Bush with uh, Goose Island. Do it your way. We only bought it so the money could roll in. We didn't buy it to screw it up. That's my impression. I could be totally wrong. You know what I'm saying? Like Anheuser Bush could be micromanaging Goose Island, and a uh, Miller could be micromanaging Miller Coors, and Molson Coors could be micromanaging Line and Kugels. Diageo could be micromanaging Johnny Walker, but I don't get that impression. Do not get that impression. 
uh, just like I expected. The Johnny Walker is just gold, just straight up gold. Look at that. It looks like gold. Wouldn't you love to have some gold jewelry? And this is greenish gold. Inverhouse is going to be a paler, drier product. Now, nowhere did I say it's going to be better. It's inexpensive. This whole one liter bottle, one liter, not a 750, one liter. Yep, superbly light. One liter was $10.99. You say, well, that's pretty dang cheap. $10.99 for a liter of scotch whiskey, blended scotch whiskey. Oh, it's cheaper than that because you can get JW Dance from Heaven Hill people for $8.99. And that might be even actually a little better than Inver House. Uh, but that's kind of a, they're, they're both okay. But uh, some people might get on the internet talking about how they are trash, garbage, filth, scum, you know, horrors, atrocities of mankind, undrinkable, airplane glue, you know, rubber band. I didn't notice anything like that. All right. Now, were they kind of bland and dull? Yeah. Kind of ho-hum. But none of those horrible things that people will say will say. Now I asked my friend David, I said, what'd you think about the 100 Pipers? Because I bought him a half size bottle. It was only $1.99. He said, uh, yeah, it was okay. And I said, what about the James Fox Canadian blended whiskey? It was all right, because I got that for $2.99. But I told him, I said, I never even tried James Fox. Got a big liter bottle though, that I bought for it was two years ago. Was it $8.99 or $10.99? I just cannot remember. And you know, I didn't keep the receipt for two years. Um, but it wasn't much. Something's telling me it was $8.99, which seems preposterously low at Broadway Liquors. And then it was no longer there. I went back to Broadway Liquors. It was gone. And then Savannah Discount had it for real cheap. And then it was gone. So, uh, but that's another story. We got to wait two weeks for James Fox. Um, oh, no, not two weeks, two months, I think, because I've got a Jim Beam Prohibition Repeal coming up. Not Prohibition Repeal, Repeal Batch. Yeah, Jim Beam Repeal Batch. Non-chill filtered, straight bourbon whiskey. And it's going to go in comp to, into competition against everything that I own. Will it beat the... Uh, That one from Drake, the Virginia Black, which is not made in Virginia. Strange name, right? I would hope so, because that's that's some strange stuff. And for $33, no, Mathern's had a $38 a bottle. 38 bucks for one bottle of Virginia Black. Uh, but I don't see anybody buying it. And anyway, how many people are worrying about Drake in 2020? You say, well, in 2016, I know. In 2016, in 1980, people were listening to Casey and the Sunshine ba uh, Band. Babe, I love you so. The minute you walk out that door, please don't go. You know what I'm saying? But this is not 1980. And they were watching Dukes of Hazzard with the big Confederate flag on the top of the corner. Nobody was triggered because nobody was worried about that. But then after years of our left-wing friends lecturing the people, now they offended. <laughs> uh, don't get them started. And I haven't even started drinking yet. Uh-oh. I mean, I wouldn't drink whiskey at this time of the morning. I, I don't know what I'm saying. I mean, I haven't started tasting it yet. You know, I have enough self-control. Um, it smells musty, kind of peaty, like that compost, kind of twangy. You know, like a malt liquor will have that beer twang. This thing has that scotch whiskey twang. You say, oh, it must be the Inver House. I know it must be. Well, let's go with this aroma. <laughs> okay, that's Johnny Walker. <laughs> you say, well, what do you mean? Well, it's smoky. It's like smoked grains. It's like smoked pork, even like you have. You say, oh, huh. so you're smoking a Boston butt and you can smell. Exactly. It's so rich and savory in the nose. 
It's twenty dollars a bottle. I got that course banquet for so cheap. Let's see, four point five three divided by six divided by sixteen times twelve times thirty. Sixteen ninety eight a thirty pack. That's what how it would convert if you went to twelve ounce cans. Yeah, that's about as cheap as you'll get Coors Banquet in America. Sixteen ninety eight a thirty pack. But of course, the cans I bought are sixteen ounces. They're pints, so it would you know, you could really be a nut and drink twelve ounces and save four for the next day, and then you say that would go flat. You wouldn't do that to save money. I wouldn't. Some people are that tight. You know, they do those kind of things. They're eccentric. Doesn't make any difference to me if I don't have to live with them. Okay. You say you're not doing much of the challenge. I know because it isn't going to be a challenge. I knew this before I went in. It's no kind of challenge. The Ember House is fine, I guess. Tastes like cereal grain. You say, you mean like breakfast cereal? Yeah, in a way, without the sugar, you know, they have the sugar on it or corn syrup or whatever they use, the the natural chocolate flavor ha -ha, and all that. You know, just what I mean, the cereal grain part of it, N namely what? You know what? Corn, maize. And a little barley, malted barley, single malt. It's probably 20% single malt whiskey. You say, what is it? It's the Macallan or whatever that is. 18 year single malt. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. You know what it is as well as I do. It's an inexpensive commodity single malt, a group of single malt whiskeys from Scotland that they're blending into this. In with the 80% grain, column still grain alcohol, grain spirits, odorless, colorless. You know they're not going to use the most premier stuff in an eight ninety nine. I'm sorry, ten ninety nine liter bottle. But still, it's okay. Are people buying this to contemplate, swish around, smell? Oh, I'm sorry, you don't smell whiskey. You nose it. I think that's what they say on the internet. Let me nose it. Oh yeah, the rich character of the whiskey is very, oh, oh it's very, uh, blah, 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 blah. no, people don't buy that for this. I mean, people don't buy this for that. They buy it to mix with RC Cola at six in the morning when they get off of work, if they work night shift and watch reruns of Three's Company. You know that, and I know that. That's what it is, a basic nothing product, but it's not bad nothing, you get it. I'm here, it's so dark in your room, says Gabe. I know, because it's Dawn Busters, and that's what we do on Dawn Busters. We start in the dark and watch the daylight come into play. If it'll ever happen. Now this product is really quality, you see. The smoke, the smoke, the smoke. It is so, it's like a tunnel of smoke. Like Bruce Springsteen could write a song about this scotch and call it Tunnel of Smoke. Um, is it the smokiest scotch I've ever tried? Yes, it is. Now, your counterpoint might be, but you haven't tried that many in the last four years. You're right. Last five years, going on five years. I haven't really, but I have tried a good amount now. Uh, I had some single malts that my friend David bought. He paid a lot of money. Um, I did. I did like them. But. They weren't as smoky as this. And I did not find that the ones I tried were that 
extraordinary relative to some of the blendeds I've been drinking, uh, tasting. So I have to get deeper into it. I, I'm not opposed in any way to drinking single malt scotch. Okay. And I don't have some kind of chip on my shoulder. Like some people got like this hang up, like you got these partisans, they'd be blended scotch partisans and they spend 12, you know, eight days a week talking, hollering, screaming about why it's better than single malt. And you got the single malt people that look down and scoff. Oh, you peasant, you pathetic creature. Only a real man, you know, a real man drinks only single malt, blah, 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 to go on all day. And I don't even care. Because I got no horse in the race and I'm not a partisan and I, I'm not on either side. I'm not in either camp. I just try them as they come. And whatever I find in the taste, I'll tell you about it, okay? It's like beer, adjunct. You got the adjunct people that go on and on all day long, on and on till the break of dawn. They eat, they drink their sugar with coffee and cream. And then they just talk about, oh, crap, your people are so snobby and hung up and elitist and blah, blah, blah. And it goes on. And then the crap beer people say, you know, you peasant, a real man would drink only crap beer and blah, blah, blah. And they go on and I just kind of detach and I watch it. And I'm like, hmm interesting it's interesting in a way but i've never been i've never been part of the strong and sturm and throng you know what i mean the the the, the culture conf i like beer and i like tasting them and say okay here's a brand it came out in 1894 it's made with these ingredients it's coming from a company and it tastes like this oh next i like this brand Da, 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 da. Next, I like this brand. Da, 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 da. Next, wine, same thing. Whiskey or brandy, same thing. But to say I'm part of a struggle, you know, we're working toward this great goal. This is the wrong channel for you. This is the wrong channel for you because we are not working toward any great goal. We are simply tasting the products and letting you know what we think about them. And the Johnny Walker Red Label it destroys obliterates, beats, slaps, kicks, punches. Poor old Inverhouse around. Don't think Inverhouse is bad. But um, it can't compete, can't compete. Oh, look at that Johnny Walker. I tasted it all. Wouldn't I wouldn't drink whiskey this early in the morning. I have some kind of, like I told you, I have some kind of brains some kind of self-control, but tasting it, I did a lot of tasting, you see. So, uh, oh, what a jewel, what a jewel. Now, one of the whiskey people said, but you're just at the bottom. You haven't even tried the really good things. I say, yeah. Well, if I'm at the bottom of Johnny Walker, which I am, the red label is the base model. It's the base model. Imagine what it's gonna be like climbing that ladder. If they keep getting better, I'm gonna keep getting more excited. Oh, wow. Okay. What's the next Scotch whiskey coming up after this taste challenge? Oh, you, later in 2020? Johnny Walker Blue Label. I figured I'd go to the high, high, you know, start at the low, low, the red, and then go to the high, high, the blue. And then we can do the middle later, you know, the black, the double black, then the platinum, the green, the, uh, Weebles wobble, but they don't fall down. Whatever one they come out with. Inexpensive doesn't mean bad, says Kyle. It sure doesn't. Sunrise in Phoenix is 7.16 a.m. 8.16, your time. Okay. You can go eat at Mel's Diner. Tell Alice and Flo and Vera, I said, hello, guys. And Mel, you keep cooking all that awful food now. but I'm just giving Mel a hard time. I mean, he has good chili, I'm just joking. Okay, but uh, Gabe, you might eat at Mel's Diner sometimes. Ember House is okay. I would recommend it in the sense of buying something cheap, but I wouldn't recommend it in the sense of having an adventure. So if you buy Ember House and think, oh, I just can't wait to try it, it's better, it's gonna be really something. No, it won't be really something. It'll be really basic. And right along the lines of your, um, 
Piper Dean type thing. Uh, One Hundred Pipers is a cheap one that has more character because it got more smoke. Clan McGregor is a cheap one that's got more character because it got more peat. Ember House just kind of running the mill. Scoresby's kind of that way, just kind of blah, blah. You know, blah, blah doesn't mean bad; it just means you know, blah, bland. Okay, I think we get that. People, it's like, okay, I get it. You made your point. Get off the air. Good advice. Thank you. I gave myself my own advice and credit to somebody else. Okay, so uh, Johnny Walker, as predicted, wins easily. How's it going to do against the last few I have lined up? Well, it's going to beat him. That's what's going to happen. So if you want to save yourself time and effort, don't watch him because it's all you're going to see is me talking about how it's killing him. Uh, and uh, now the, 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 the bourbon is going to be a challenge because Jim Beam is not considered like uh, the world's greatest thing. And the other bourbons I have aren't either. So that could be a comparable, you know, that could be a fair challenge. I think that'll be um, even. It'll be even relatively. Uh, so speaking. All right. Thanks.